really appreciate you joining me. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for anyone who's listening now or listening in the future who may not know who you are. All right. First of all, I am an incredibly competent lawyer and incredibly <laughs> incompetent <laughs> Facebook. Okay. Um, all right. So my name is E.J. Rosenbaum. I founded a law firm with my partner, Anthony Familaro, who, if you're watching, you are the greatest partner on the planet. And our entire practice, and now we're like almost 35 people strong, our entire focus is on Amazon sellers. About 40% of the practice has nothing to do with the law. It has to do with writing plans of action for suspended sellers, where they're suspended for a use sold as new, inauthentic, related accounts, and all sorts of non-legal issues. 40% um, has everything to do with the law, and that is intellectual property complaints, where either a seller receives a complaint from a brand, and they're usually baseless, and we help them get back on by getting those complaints withdrawn, or as sellers now move more and more and more into their own private label, we then protect their intellectual property rights. And in a way, we play the other side of the fence. But sellers now, I mean, the wave of the future is to develop your private label brands. And we are right along with those sellers protecting the intellectual property that they're developing. Uh, the remaining 20%, we do a lot of contracts for sellers. And we also, we take Amazon to arbitration like every day of the week. <laughs> if Amazon refuses to reinstate your account, refuses to give you back your inventory, they claim they destroyed it when they really didn't, your remedy is to take them to arbitration. And according to Amazon's lawyers, we have 75% of all the arbitration cases uh, against Amazon. So that's what we do. Uh, everything's done out of this office here in beautiful downtown Long Beach, New York. But we also have full-time staff in two cities in China, and also we have full-time staff in Europe. There you go. So was a majority of your time spent on dealing with suspensions? Yeah, yeah. Most I'd say 75, 80 percent of the time is suspensions. Absolutely. How, how many times? Of, how many times is it actually Amazon's fault, and they just weren't paying attention or did something stupid? You know, uh, that's a really good question. I would say that. Well, let's look at it this way, whether Amazon is right or wrong in terms of suspension. I'd probably say the majority of times Amazon is wrong. Their accusations are incorrect. Mm -hmm. You know, they're saying you're authentic, but they really just want to see your invoices. And to me, Amazon's wrong because no one is selling or very few people are actually selling, selling counterfeit goods. So I'd probably say 75% of the time. Uh, the other 25% of the time, the sellers are making errors or they unknowingly bought uh, counterfeit products or they just got to get better up to speed and fine tune their business operations. So right, 75, 25. Okay. So over the past, like, let's say over the past month, maybe two months, I've noticed a lot of sellers have started to complain about like just reviews going missing. Um, like Amazon, you know, starting to re remove stuff. And then I've started to hear things here and there about, sellers just getting suspended from having, you know, false reviews or, you know, some robot or a bunch of bot reviews or anything like that. Is that something that you guys are dealing with a lot now? Or is that just, I just happened to hear a couple people and that was, now I think it's everyone. <laughs> no, since, since the beginning of the, you know, it started about a year, year and a half ago when Amazon, you know, said you can't compensate anybody for reviews. Mm -hmm. And that sort of started this wave of making it harder and harder to get reviews and much, much harder on keeping reviews. So, you have the review manipulation suspensions, which seem to come in a wave since the beginning of the year, like January, February, we got a ton, then it was down for a bit, then it sparked up again. And then like every two or three weeks, there'll be like a wave of review manipulation suspensions. Um, and those are problematic depending on how you're getting your reviews. You know, if you're using, um, you know, Facebook or you're offering something or friends and relatives are buying your products and leaving reviews, or you have people leaving reviews that didn't buy the products, right? You're gonna mm -hmm. get nailed get your accounts back but it's difficult um, in terms of taking away reviews uh, we think that's also we think that's a lot of things we think are actually people behind it i think that taking away the reviews that's al algorithmic but we've seen that also there's not much that we've been able to do to help people get their reviews back once they've been knocked down and a lot of times we're a little fearful that it may not be worth the fight you know let's say you lose 20 percent of your reviews do you really want to pick that battle and poke the bear <laughs> to have Amazon sort of look at the other 80 reviews and then potentially yeah. risk your risk your account. You know, we're very risk averse for our sellers. We want to keep you selling. Like, I don't want to chase 10% of your sales and lose 90% of your business. Yeah. Uh, so we have seen it, but we're not really doing much about that. Yeah. What's the, 
number one reason you see people suspended for? And then what is the usual turnaround on getting unsuspended, if at all? All right. The, the, it's still the same. It's still the inauthentic. Amazon sends you, uh, they knock out your ACE and sometimes they'll knock down your account for inauthentic. They want to see where you're sourcing your products from. And the way you address it is really simple. You do a really short persuasive plan of action showing that your products are genuine and attach invoices that are either not altered or if you did alter them, Amazon can't tell. And I've got about 20 different tips that I can provide to sellers that before they send their invoices into Amazon on an inauthentic, what they really need to look for. And also I can teach sellers what to look for invoices going forward. So it's really important. We learn a lot of stuff from the arbitrations. We learn a lot of stuff by just handling, you know, hundreds or thousands of suspensions. So there are certain things you want to make sure you start getting on your invoices and to make sure you're not submitting invoices with problems. Okay. So I don't know if you heard Prime Day leaked so july 16th and 17th so we found that out today for anyone who doesn't know um what's is there an inundation of, of all of a sudden people just reaching out to you trying to make sure they're winning the buy box because they have brand registry and i have hijackers and all that stuff or or are you still pretty like just you business as usual right now we get a lot more phone calls in advance of Prime Day, mm -hmm. uh, but they're pretty quick because there's, if there's not a problem, um, our, our advice is almost the same across the board, all right? Keep, keep exactly what you're doing. If you're not suspended, not having problems, keep what you're doing. Don't make any changes in advance of Prime Day. You may want to do some lifting, op listing optimization, which really isn't what we do. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like avoiding a suspension, just don't make any changes, yeah. okay? Don't make any drafts changes what we also have in advance is the suspensions that come in is everyone is like you know you know everyone's in a rush when they call me there's no one that calls me that is not in a rush to get their account back <laughs> or listing back prime days rushing you know it's like christmas get yeah. me back and i get my plan of action out the door today um so we turn it around I and mean, we 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 promise a two-day turnaround on a plan of action but when prime day is gearing up you know we made the announcement to our whole team listen you guys gonna get ready for extra hours okay because every seller's got to be online. So if they happen to get knocked off, we got to turn around as quickly as possible. Uh, so that's what we get. But if you're not suspended, stay the course. You're doing well. Don't try and explode in advance of Prime Day. Keep your eye on the long term and don't do anything drastic. I would suggest you do some listing optimization. Mm -hmm. uh, you may want to drop your prices a bit. Uh, but other than that, no major changes. Just stay online. Yeah. What do you mean by no major changes? Well, like I wouldn't start changing where you're sourcing your products from. I wouldn't start expanding your catalog into products you don't have. I wouldn't jump into drop shipping. Uh, mm -hmm. We saw over the past like three months, like an incredible uptick in people getting inauthentic suspensions where they didn't have the product in inventory, which means they couldn't provide the invoices, right? So if you're chugging along and you're doing well, don't jump on listings where you don't have inventory. So don't make any yeah. changes to your account. You'll do well just by maintaining the course. So that, that's what we recommend. Okay. So halfway through the year, we're in June, Q2 is almost over. What have you seen over the first half of the year versus what you assume is we're about to get into over the second half of the year? We see a constant, constant wave towards private label sellers. Um, if you're doing retail arbitrage, you got just agreements i think there's still lots and lots and lots of money to be made so i wouldn't tell mm -hmm. you to stop but i think the future is developing your own private label um, i also think that this thing with the united states supreme court the decision that every state collects sales tax from you um, i think sellers have to be very careful right now i think amazon may use that as a weeding out process of the smaller sellers um, mm -hmm. i hope amazon steps up to the plate and collects sales tax for every single seller around the entire country but we don't know what's going to happen yet. So I think there's going to be more of a weeding out. And if you have your own private label, you're building an asset that you own. So I would suggest sellers start, if they're not doing it already, look into it. If they are doing it, you'll ramp it up faster. So we don't know what's going to happen after this decision. Yeah. So these Friday feedback things, always quick, short to the point. Loved everything. That was awesome. Definitely going to have to share this one out to everyone who's thinking of making any serious changes two weeks before Prime Day, which is ridiculous. 
Uh, but CJ would love uh, some closing words, how everyone can find you, how you can help out. This is going everywhere I can, I can put it, so make sure that it, it stays. <laughs> All right. Well, you can reach me. The website's AmazonSellersLawyer.com. Sellers is plural, lawyer is singular. You can email me directly, cj at AmazonSellersLawyer.com. But if I'm getting two seconds to plug something, I'm going to plug something else, okay? Everyone who's doing business on Amazon is also shopping on Amazon. We all have sort of a love-hate relationship, right? But your packages arrive and sellers are practically flawless. If you're shopping on Amazon, use Amazon Smiles and pick the Ty Lewis Campbell Foundation. T-Y, Ty Lewis Campbell Foundation. It's a charity started by a buddy of mine who lost his son to cancer. Um, and it doesn't cost the buyer anything. And Amazon will do a small donation. So that's what I'd like to say. Oh, awesome. If you're shopping, Amazon Smiles, Ty Lewis Campbell Foundation. That's awesome. CJ. Hi. Sorry if that was cool. a good word. Very, no, totally good. Very much appreciated. Enjoy your weekend. Good talking to you. I'm sure we'll talk again. Have a good one. Thanks. You too, buddy. Take care. Bye.